Focus. Come on. Come on. Okay, there we go. All right, guys. I have not done an intro like this in a long time, but um, welcome to my newest video. Um, if you want to skip past this whole introduction, click this right here, or go to this timestamp, rather. Um, it'll brush past all this talking and stuff and jump right into the tutorial. Um, but for those of you who have subscribed and have followed me over this past little while now, um, one, thank you. Um, it's been awesome. And two, uh, you've probably been wondering where, I, where I've been. Um, I bought a farm. I live on a farm now. You can kind of see it out there. That's the farm. Anywho, but so I've been really busy with that as, as well as a couple other uh, projects that I've been working on. Um, so I haven't had a lot of time to do modding stuff. I haven't had a lot of time to do modding stuff, but now I'm back to it. In fact, I'm doing mods for different games, um, namely Morrowind, per this video. Um, and I'm really excited to make it. I worked a long time on the script and putting it together to make sure that it was something that was exciting for everybody involved. Um, so I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Really hope you like it. Um, and let's just go ahead and jump into it. Don't forget to frickin' like and subscribe. All right, guys, we are going to get started. I'm gonna go over some tools that you're gonna to need to do this. Again, if you wanna skip over this part, go to the timestamp here, um, because there are some programs that you're gonna need. All the free ones are gonna be in the description with download links. Um, like Nipscope and the BSA Unpacker, those are going to be in the description. But other than that, there um, there are some other tools that you're going to need. Namely, what I'm going to be using is Blender. Highly recommend it. There's an add-on for Blender that makes um, that makes your life about a million times easier um, because it creates the NIFs for you. It can import uh, NIFs from Morrowind. Um, it's awesome add-on. That'll be in the description as well, as well as a download link to Blender. It's free, just get it, it's worth learning. Um, then you're also gonna need Photoshop. Um, if you don't have Photoshop, that's totally fine. You can use paint.net. I know plenty of Marwin modders that use paint.net and they love it. Um, and then you can also use something like GIMP. Both paint.net and GIMP, as far as I remember, are in fact still free. Um, so go ahead and go download those. Um, if you don't have Photoshop. If you don't want to use Blender though, there are other paid 3D softwares that you can use like Maya and 3ds Max, which is what Bethesda used when creating Morrowind. You can use those, that's totally fine. But I, again, I highly recommend Blender because a lot of the tutorial kind of surrounds it. And if you're not familiar with Blender, I will also link a tutorial series in the description um, that goes over pretty much everything you're gonna need to know about Blender. Next, you're going to need Nipscope, BSA Unpacker, which is a tool specifically for um, unpacking the Morrowind ESMs, so you can get the raw files. You're also going to need the Morrowind construction set, and I will link to that in the description as well. First things first that I want to do is I want to go ahead and show you guys um, what we're going to be doing with the BSA Unpacker, because that's kind of the first step here. So. You're going to open up BSA Unpacker, um, and we're going to be getting a reference uh, model from Morrowind. The reason that we're going to do that is because um, in, when you load it up into like Blender or Maya or whatever you're using, you want a good object to reference for scale, um, whether it be like a sword or a great axe or whatever. <clears throat> going to go ahead, install and open up BSA Unpacker. You're going to click open, and then you're going to navigate to your Morrowind directory, wherever that is. If you have it through Steam, it's going to be in your Steam apps, common, Morrowind. Um, or if you have it downloaded somewhere else, just find the directory for it and open it on up. You're going to go to the Morrowind folder, then go to data files, and then in here you will find the uh, Blood Moon BSA, uh, Morrowind BSA, and the Tribunal BSA. 
Um, for all intents and purposes today, we're just going to go with the Morrowind one because we're just getting weapons for scale. But you can also unpack the Blood Moon and Tribunal ones. There's some cool stuff in those. Those are the two main DLCs for Morrowind. So go ahead and click on the Morrowind BSA. Click open. And then you have a whole list of stuff here. Got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this is every single NIF file, um, art file for like textures and stuff, everything that's in the game right here. This is all of it. So <clears throat> let's say let's say we're making a great axe, because today we're gonna be making a great axe or battle axe or whatever. So you can go ahead and just click anywhere in here and you can type in uh um gonna want to type in meshes and then you're gonna want to just kind of scroll down until you find any sort of battle axe because like i said before we're just using it for scale um and generally speaking um the main part of the scale that we're going to be using is the the grip where you're holding it because you don't want it clipping through the fingers of the um characters or whatever so go ahead and here we go dwemer battle axe right here you can just click on that and then you can click extract and then find a place. I like to make a, a folder on my desktop for it. So we're gonna click new, folder, Morrowind. I already have one, so we're just gonna call it Morrowind 2, but you can call it Morrowind 1. Open that up, and then click save. There is another option, if you don't wanna scroll and find and yada yada yada. And I highly recommend doing this, um, just because the Marn files aren't very big, so it's worthwhile to just get all of them. And you can get all of them by literally just clicking Extract All, and then navigate to that folder that you created. So this PC, Desktop, um, Marwin 2. Okay. And then it'll take a second, but like I said, Marwin files aren't very big. I think this is going to be like a gig in total, and it's totally worth getting all of these files because it's then it's super easy to search for the meshes that you want if you ever want to add in the base game textures you can literally just grab them right from this folder you got the entire archive now you can just open it on up and look you got meshes in here and so now look at how easy this is i can search battle axe takes a second but there you go battle axe iron got it right there um and you can take this and use this and then it has it broken down into these subfolders. The W is for the weapons, and you'll find all the weapons in the game in here. Uh, you know, you got your maces, you got your tantos, war axes, you know, everything. So, highly recommend just getting all of them. It's well worth it, um, and it only takes a second. Now that you have all of them, you can go ahead and just exit out of the BSA browser. And next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hop in to your... Uh, modeling software. So, like I said, we're going to be using Blender for this tutorial. Now that we have Blender open, we're going to want to go on to the um, Blender plugin for Morrowind that I'm going to link down in the description. Go into this and then go into the download section. You're going to go to the plugin and releases page. And then you're going to go ahead. This is the latest one right here. You're going to click this right here, the io underscore scene underscore Morrowind dot zip. Click that, download it. Um, you can just drag it right onto your desktop. Um, and don't unpack it. You, do, you don't want to um, unpack the zip because we're going to open up Blender again. We're going to go to Edit, Preferences. And then we're going to click Install. Navigate to wherever you have it. Click it, and then you're going to click Install Add-on. I already have it installed, right? Um, so I don't want to override anything or mess it up or whatever. So you're just going to click on it and then click install. Then it should pop up like this and then it'll be unchecked for you, but you're just going to click the check mark. It'll, en it'll enable the add on and then you will be ready to go. And you can see right here, you know, we've got the Morrow and NIF. Now that you have the um, <clears throat> texturing software open or the uh, now that you have the modeling software open and you have the add on installed. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and uh, import our reference. So, from before, when you downloaded or um, extracted all of the uh, meshes from the Morrowind thing, you're going to go ahead and go into the Morrowind folder with all the meshes that you have extracted. Click Meshes. After you're doing a weapon, go to the W tab. 
and you should find weapons in here. We're doing a battle axe today. Here, do one more battle axe. So I'm gonna, again, just drag it right onto my desktop for easy finding. It's not a big deal. I'm actually going to copy it onto my desktop because you don't wanna be taking files out of here because this is your this is your library of references. So don't, don't like take things out of here, just copy and paste them to wherever you want them. So back in Blender. We're gonna go up to file, import, and then morrowin.mif. Gonna go to your desktop, find the Dwemer Battle X NIF or whatever you're using. That's your reference. Click on it, click import NIF. Now, this little Python error here, I get this every single time I import or export a Morrowind NIF. I don't know why. It's weird. I've talked to some people about it. They don't know why either. You might get it too. It's not super uncommon, but all you have to do is go ahead, just re import it again, and there you go. It's right there. Don't know why it happens. No idea. It's 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 weird. Um, but there you go. You have it right here. And now uh, this is to scale. This is tomorrow in scale. So now whatever you make, you just want to make sure that it's roughly the same size. Like I said before, we're mo we're more or less just focusing on the uh, width of the grip. Make sure that fingers aren't clipping through it. And um, you also want to make sure that the hand position is generally about correct. Um, I think for battle axes, your hands are gonna sit right around here and right around here, give or take. But generally speaking, um, with like swords and stuff, it tends to be pretty obvious where the hand's gonna sit. So you just wanna make sure that all that's fine and dandy. So now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, model our weapon. I have already modeled it. Um, and so I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse of it. If you want to see the time lapse of me modeling it, you can go ahead and sit through it. If you don't, you can go ahead and click the timestamp that appears on the screen, or you can go ahead and go to the timestamp that's on the screen now, go ahead and skip over that and right into the next step.
So now that we have our weapon, I did want to make a few um, notes about the UV unwrapping. When it comes to this, you want to make sure that your UVs are going to fit in a 128 by 128 to uh, 512 by 512 ratio, somewhere in that range. So you can see here with mine, I'm going to go into UV editing. Just go ahead and open it up. And see, mine is a rectangle currently. And I know that mine is at 256 by 512. That's okay. It just, it can't be at like 255 by 511 or even 255 by 512. It needs to be in those variables or in, in those uh, divisions, um, making sure that it's in uh, uh, divisible by like 32. Um, and you really don't want to go any lower than 128 by 128. That's pretty small. Mine being 256 by 512 is not like super big or anything. That's about standard for modders. Some people go a little bit lower, like 256 by 256. It just depends on what you want out of your textures. If you want higher detail, go higher. If you want lower detail, go lower. But I wouldn't go above 512 um, just because Morrowind's a really old game, old engine. You want to make sure that you're not... Um, putting too much strain on the engine. Um, but go ahead, UV unwrap your model, however it is that you like it. I usually like to just project mine from view because we're gonna be painting right over this in uh, Photoshop. All right, so with our model unwrapped, uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and go back to the layout menu, make sure that you have your weapon selected. And then we are going to go down to the material properties tab and we are going to click Create Morrowind Shader. This is an option given to us by the Blender add-on that we installed earlier. If you're using a different software, you're not gonna be able to use this option. Um, just warning you now. Um, but with Blender, you get this option. So you're gonna click Create Morrowind Shader, right? And then in this box, we're gonna go ahead and type in the uh, name that we want our texture file to have. For me, I'm going to do um, TX underscore W underscore uh, storm case because this weapon is called storm case. Enter. So now we have that. We uh, we're gonna put a pin in that though, <clears throat> because we're gonna come back to the step later. Uh, where the material being made, and everything. We're gonna go back to UV editing, and with your UV layout completed, click on UV. Export UV layout, and then you can see how I have a bunch of them here, but. For this purposes, you can just keep it. You can keep the name as whatever. This is more or less like a temporary file. Um, you want to make sure that the size is proportional to what you have yours at. I think Blender defaults to 1024 by 1024. Um, but for mine, I made a I made a specific like image in Blender to be able to do it this way. But the only thing that you want to keep note of is making sure that this fill opacity is at zero. Otherwise, whenever you import it to Photoshop, things are going to be funky and it's going to really annoy you. So it always really annoys me. Um, then you can just click Export UV Layout. With that completed, we are able to go ahead and go into Photoshop. So when you get into Photoshop, um, you're going to want to click Create New. Um, you can title it whatever. I like to I like to save a lot of my files, so I'm going to title it uh, uh, yeah, Storm Kiss Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that the dimensions of this file are the exact same as the dimensions of the um, UV layout export. So we're going to go with uh, 256, height, 512. Okay, and click create. All right, and now you got this guy. So you're going to go ahead and um, click on the background. Click G for the fuel tool, fill tool, where it's over here in your tool drop down, the paint bucket. And then you're going to want to paint this black or just some other really obvious color for yourself. Um, and then you're going to want to do Control Shift N or just create a new tab through these little guys over here, these, these little line guys, new layer. And then what I like to do is make one that is, make another filler, another background layer that's a little bit lighter, like that and then lock it. So we don't want to mess with that. Then we're going to go ahead and go to wherever you saved the UV layout. I saved mine in my blend folder, in my uh, blender folder. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. 
Part one mods, unique weapons. And then mine is right here, Stormcast. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that right in. Lower this to somewhere, anywhere between like 30 and 60, whatever really works for you. I'm gonna put mine at like 45 ish just to start and then lock it make sure that this layer is always on top so you can always see it then create a new layer right between the uh, light background layer and the um, uv layer all right so now that you have this <clears throat> you want to do um, a couple things you would kind of want to get a base coat for your uh for your weapon so i went ahead and since I was having a lot of trouble thinking of what I wanted for this weapon, I went ahead and uh, created a concept sketch for it. And it's nothing pretty, nothing good. It just gives you a good idea on what you want. You don't have to do this by any means. I just personally did it because um, it helps me in my process. But you do whatever works for you. Um, I'm going to get it kind of roughly in place. Doesn't need to be perfect because I'm not going to be strictly following this or anything. Um, I'm more or less using this as a as a base layer. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this. Call this base layer. All right, cool. And you'll remember how before I mentioned that you should export all of the Marwin files, right? And this is why. You're going to want to go ahead and go into textures, and you're going to want to find textures in Morrowind already that kind of match what you're going for. Because to get that authentic Morrowind look to your weapons, you're going to obviously want to use Morrowind's textures. And then you're going to paint over them, make them look good, that sort of thing. Um, so you can go ahead and use any of the textures from Morrowind itself. I personally don't use Morrowind's vanilla textures super often anymore. I like to use upscale textures from a mod called Morrowind Enhanced Textures. Uh, I believe they doubled or tripled the size of like every texture in the game. They uploaded all of them. And it's a really good modding resource. I highly recommend it. The link will be in the description if you want to download those textures. Um, and they work as a really great base layer um, because they're high resolution you know it's 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 a good starting points better than Mara ones and they still look really really good in the game all right and then I'm gonna want to find some textures that are gonna work for me so let's see uh, steel this is a steel weapon uh, we got a bunch of steel stuff in here this looks good this here I'm gonna throw that on my desktop real quick um, ooh this looks good too this uh, what is this? Grief? Looks good, too. Maybe this blade. Might use that. So we're going to go back into Photoshop. Window this a little bit. Oop. Window this a little bit. Because now we're going to be dragging in all these textures that we just brought in. Alright, <clears throat> so now you're going to want to just start kind of form-fitting all of these textures to your uh, weapon. Um, and this is a really good way to, again, get that kind of, like, it's not a base layer because we already have a base layer. Um, it might be a base layer for you if you don't have some sort of like painted layer behind it. It, it just works as like kind of helping you get that Marwind look. And you can resize these, mess with them. Just keep in mind the more that you resize them, the more they kind of get like grainy and nasty. So you want to be careful and thoughtful about it. But otherwise you can really do just about anything. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse through this process. Um, I don't want this video to be a million years long, just watching me do these textures, but you'll get the idea through watching the time lapse. Um, if you want to skip the time lapse, um, go ahead and go to the timestamp that's on screen now, and it'll skip over the textures process if you already have all your textures and jump right into the next step. But for now, we are just going to time lapse over this, and I will see you when it's done.
and we're back. Uh, textures are finished. Um, at least I believe they're finished. We won't really know for sure um, if they're done done until we get into game. So we're gonna get them in Blender. We're gonna take a look at them on the model. Once you're at this point and you're ready to export your textures, you're going to go to File, Save As, make sure it's on computer. I'm going to go to the directory that you want to save them in. I save them in my folder for Blender, but you can save them save them wherever um, for now. Because we're going to be eventually moving them from, uh, from there into the Morrowind directory. Textures, and then you're going to want to name them the same thing as uh, what you named the material in Blender. All right, so you, at this point, you have the... You have the name correct, you have them where you want them. So the save as type, you're gonna click the drop down, you're gonna click DDS, right? And you can see all the other textures that I've made. Then you're gonna click save. And then here you're gonna get this big scary dialog box, but it's really not that bad. Um, you have a couple options with these, right? So a common and popular one is DXT1 uh, for BBP, no alpha. Um, You'll use this one if you have pretty high res textures that you're not super worried about compression, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the thing is, is that this will compress your textures quite a bit. And so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, if you're not super concerned about that, go ahead and use it. Um, if you are worried about the compression a little bit, don't use it. If you have an alpha, any sort of transparency, you can't use this one. You have to use DTX3. Um, or you can use DTX one with one bit alpha, but I don't really recommend it personally. I don't think it, I don't think it looks very good, but you might have different results. If you want to look at, um, the export image that you're going to get, um, before you end up exporting you can click 2d preview. And so this is what we will be getting out of our, um, out of our export. Um, and it looks pretty good. Um, it's a, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit more pixelated, that sort of thing, but that's fine really, because that kind of just adds to that Morrowind look. It's a little bit lower resolution, not necessarily like super, super high quality, but it does add like a little bit of texture and, and grunge to it, which I kind of like it. So, um, I'm not upset by that at all. Um, if you want to look at different options, like we can go to DTX one here and then you can click refresh preview. It'll show you what that is, but you can see here it gets like super pixelated and like pretty compressed and I feel like it washes out a lot of my details and I just don't really like it personally. So I usually go with DTX3, refresh, and then you can see it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click save now. And then we're going to open up Blender. All right, cool. So now we're in here in Blender, got our, uh, got our axe here, and then we're going to go to the material properties tab. I'm going to click open and then we're going to go into the area that you saved your textures in here it is storm kiss textures open it up there you go it's it's right on your model and this is a pretty good representation of what it's going to look like uh in marwin this is a marwin shader so it's it's going to give you a good idea of as i said what it's going to look like in the game you know what i mean so um there you go i realizing here that I didn't exactly follow the curvature very well. Um, that's my mistake. I just, I didn't look at the textures very well. You can he see here that we have some stretching on these textures here. That's fine. I'm just going to go through and um, I'm going to fix those manually. Once you're done fixing those up, we will move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and get mine fixed up, get them exactly how I want them, and then I will be back. Okay, so I went ahead and I made the changes that I needed to my model. I also went ahead and created a secondary texture for this called a glow texture. And I'll go ahead and show that to you now. Um, so I just took in here and I have these runes on my weapon, right? So I isolated the runes and I made them blue. And that's what they look like. This is the texture right here. This is what it looks like. I exported it just like this. Black means no glow, and then anything that's not pure black will glow, right? It'll show up when it's dark outside in Morrowind. And you can even see it in Blender a little bit with the add-on, so I'll show you that as well. But um, because we have this Blender add-on, we are able to add in this glow texture really, really easily. Um, 
when you go down to your material properties, and this is totally optional, but if you want to do it, go down to your material properties. And so long as it's the same UV map and everything, you just go down here to glow texture, click open, new textures, and then here, there it is right there. Uh, texture underscore storm kiss and then underscore glow. Click open and bada bing bada boom. That's what it looks like. Um, and so it's not going to look exactly like this in game. Um, the glow texture really only shows up when it's dark. Um, we're kind of, oh, so this is this is a lot like how it'll look in game. This is this will look like at night. It'll glow just like that. Um, really cool. Really really cool. Just adds a little bit of extra flair to your weapon. Um, so anyways, back to material mode. And then through here, you can also add stuff like decals and textures and dark textures and stuff like that. It's it's you can do a lot with it. It's really neat. Um, but anyways, so our model is now ready to be exported into Morrowind. Um, I also, another thing that I want to mention is that I went ahead and added a secondary texture to this. So this one, the TX Cavern Bone 10, that's a texture that's already in Morrowind. That's vanilla. And that's what's right here as well. And I added it because one, I, I liked the look of it. This is supposed to be a tooth. It's kind of like toothy and bony. I thought it looked cool. Um, but also I wanted to show you, um, the differences and how you set up things in Morrowind in the NIF file after we export it when it's a texture that's a vanilla texture versus when it's a unique texture because there are different ways to set it up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get this thing ready for export. So before we export, there's one other thing that we want to do. Since we're making a weapon, and this goes for if you're making an item, an armor, a weapon, anything that's going to show up in some sort of inventory that's not just a static object in the world, you're going to want to create an icon for it. So what I went ahead and did was set up this little, this little setup here. It's just a simple camera. You add it in to Blender, um, Shift A, camera, um, and then a simple light, which is an area light that's right above it. Um, it has a power of anywhere between like six to 12, kind of depends on how big your light is, how far away, you know, that sort of thing. Mine's at seven right now. You can have yours wherever. But you have it set up like that. Click on camera. And move it around to kind of get a general position. We just want really the head of the axe. That's all we really want. So something like that. I know that Morrowind has theirs flipped. So it's more like this in the traditional textures. Or in the vanilla textures. But I personally, I like it like this. I think it adds a little bit of flair to my mod. But you can do whatever you want. So once you have your once you have it all positioned and everything, you just click um, F12 and that'll render it for you. Or you go up to here to render, and then uh, render image. So click render image right there. Oh, I forgot to disable something, so I gotta go. Into here. Boom! There we go. So now we got this. Um, and one thing that I uh, that you also need to do. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. Um, before you render it, you want to go into your output properties and make sure that the resolution is at 512 by 512. Um, Marwin's icons can only be a maximum of 32 by 32. I know there are ways to work around it, but it's easier just to go to 32 by 32 row. The reason we're rendering it in 512 by 512 is that in Blender, whenever you render things lower, it tends to lose a lot of detail. So I render it at a higher resolution and then I scale it down in Photoshop. I feel like that keeps a lot of the Detail, you can render it at 32 by 32 in Blender, and then you can skip the whole Photoshop step, but it only takes a second, and I think it's worth it. But anyways, we have a rendered, our render output right here. Go and click Image, Save As. I'm gonna go to New, oops, Icons. This is where I store all my icons. This is, you, can, you can see the ones that I've made before. We're gonna call this Icon underscore uh, Storm Kiss. And then you want to save it as a Targa. Right up here in file format, click the drop down, Targa. Okay. Let's save. All right. And so that's all we have to do in Blender now, um, other than the export. So we're going to quickly export this. Select your mesh. Click File. Export. Morrowind.net. We're going to go into here, wherever you want to save it. I'm going to put it in here. Uh, w underscore. That is the common nomenclature that Morrowind uses for weapons. It's W underscore and then weapon name. 
um, when naming it, you want to make sure it's you're keeping it under 32 characters because Marwin does a, have a character limit. Um, and that includes um, that that includes the file path and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and do um, just storm kiss, storm kiss. There we go, stormkiss.nif. I have a preset for it, but I'll just show you. So since it's a static object, we want to do we want to click off export animations because we don't have any animations, and then um, tick uh, only selected. So you're only exporting this one mesh, and then click export nif. It worked first try this time, but sometimes it doesn't. And a little error, like when we um, imported our um, our reference object from before, a little error will pop up, syntax error, go ahead and just export it again. It'll probably work the second time. I've never had any issues with it. When I try to export it the second time, it just happens sometimes. I'm, I'm not sure why, but regardless. Okay, so that's all done. That means we are done in Blender for now. So you can just go ahead and get out of Blender. I'm going to keep it open just in case we need it again for anything, but I highly doubt we will. Now, the next step is to go ahead and create uh, the, Morrowind, um, the Morrowind folders that you're going to need. So I'm going to open up my Morrowind directory. I have a shortcut to it on my desktop. If you are modding pretty often, I would highly recommend just making... Uh, uh, um, shortcut to your Morrowind directory on your desktop just makes things quicker double click it boom we're in Morrowind okay and then I'm also going to open up million so I'm going to open up my project folder which has everything in it so in your Morrowind directory you're going to want to go into data files and then there's going to be three uh there's going to be three folders that we need to make so by default it'll have the meshes folder the icons folder and the textures folder in here. If you're missing the icons folder, the meshes folder, or the textures folder in your Morrowind data files, go ahead and make those. But with those made, we're gonna go one by one. So in the icons folder, you're gonna make um, a unique folder for you, for all your mods, for everything you do, minus NL mods, no, no longs fellow mods, simple. Um, double click it and you can make another subfolder in here for the specific mod you're making or just drop it in. Um, personally, I just kind of drop it in. Um, and whenever I'm packaging my mod up for later, I just pick out the ones that I need. Um, that's just me though. I like to make extra work for myself. So you can do whatever it is that you want to do, but I just have the one, uh, you folder, but, um, don't just toss them in here. It ends up just cluttering things up and like, if you have a bunch of mods downloaded, then you got to sift through everybody else's icons that they added in just to get yours out and everything like that. And so it's a big pain in the butt. So you're going to want to go ahead and make your own unique folder. Again, minus NL mods. If your name is John Smith, you could be a JS mods or, you know, Donkey Kong's mods or, you know, whatever. Um, but anyways, so to go ahead and go back to our data files. Um, you know, NL mods. Before we do that, you're going to want to open up the Stormkiss icon that you made in Photoshop. Right? Easy. It's opened up. You're going to want to go to image, your size, 32 by 32. Okay. And then just file, save, done. Okay. So now you want to drag in Stormkiss icon back into data files. We're going to go into meshes. And then again, you're going to want to create another unique folder. Mine's NL mods again. And then you can see in this one, I have a bunch of different folders. Uh, these all correspond to something. So like this one, F, this is uh, where I put all of my furniture NIFs. So I have like containers or crates here that I made, and those are considered furniture. So I have those in there. For This is EX, which stands for exterior. This is for another mod that I was working on. And this is a statue of Meridia. So that's an exterior static mesh. Um... And here we have I, this is for like alchemy stuff. Here's the one that we care about. You're going to make, so in, you know, meshes, your unique folder, you're going to want to create another folder. If you have armor, if you're making like an armor mod, you would put like, you'd make an A folder. Um, if you're making an exterior static mesh, you'd make a EX folder, interior static meshes or IN, furniture, F. Um, and I can link in the description um, a whole breakdown of those things. But 
um, for our purposes today, we're making a W folder for weapons. And this is how Marwin has it set up as well. I'm gonna go into here, um, find the NIP that you made. Mine's right here. Before we just drag and drop it in, we're gonna open it up. And we got we got our NIF right here. I'm gonna click the drop down for the NIF. I'm gonna open up both these guys here. Okay. Um, and then you're gonna um, the NI tri shapes. I'm gonna open up both of them. And then you're gonna end up open up the both of the NI texturing property nodes. You can see these are our textures. Here's the thing. Um, if you're using um, base like vanilla textures you don't have to mess with this at all this is a base vanilla texture i don't have to touch it i don't have to do anything with it um however for these ones these ones you do have to mess with these are unique textures so i know where i'm going to be putting my textures but for you the file path might change but generally speaking it goes like this you want to keep that part you want to keep the tx underscore you know whatever whatever the texture's name is but in the in front of it you want to add textures that goes for everybody add textures and then mine is nl mods slash weapons there you go and so this is the textures folder then my unique mods folder and then my subfolder within my unique folder for weapons for like weapon textures and then the texture itself but you want to make sure that you do this and it is case sensitive spelling sensitive you need to be you know, super super careful about this um most likely if you um if you're having problems with your textures not loading it's most likely this you want to make sure that everything is spelled perfectly um so then you're going to go ahead and up here click save close that out and then we're going to copy our newly um edited nif file into our unique weapons folder in the Marwan directory. So there it is right there. Then we're going to go back to the data files. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the textures. We're going to open up the textures folder. Here you can see, it's it up like that. Here you can see I have the NL mods right there under my textures folder and my data files. And then here you can see again, W. I have these broken down just like the meshes folders folder. Um, I have all the other subfolders. So W. And this is where all the textures are. Again, I'm just going to throw them in here. My textures here. And my glow texture. And my normal texture. You might just have just a normal base texture. That's okay. Um, but any unique textures you may just go ahead and toss them on in there. Um, textures slash NL mods slash W. And then the file name dot DDS, the extension. And that's what you're going to be typing into your NIF file. All of our stuff is set up in the data files. So now it's time to actually put it into Morrowind. So you're going to go ahead and open up the Morrowind construction set. And then you're going to go to File, Data Files. And then you're going to want to just click Blood Moon, Morrowind, and Tribunal. And then click OK. Now that's loaded, you're going to go to Weapons, wherever it is. And then if you're making your own unique weapon, I'm making a weapon replacer. So the weapon that I'm making is already here. But if you're making a unique weapon, what you're going to do is you're going to find the closest thing to it. Let's say you're making like claymore or something. We're making a claymore today. So you're going to go around, try and find a claymore. If you can't find it, go ahead and go to filter, claymore, seal claymore. Go ahead and open that up. Um, and this is where you'll go and you'll, you know, change the ID to uh, my sword and then name my sword and then you'll change the attributes let's say i wanted to have a million health i want it to be worth a million dollars super fast you know you're going to change it however you want it give it the stats that you want um but the important part is these two things here and so i'm going to actually show you on the weapon that i'm working and so this is going to be the exact same thing for everybody. First things first, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to this top box here. It says .nif, so you know which one it is. This is the nif file. Uh, you're going to click it. Then you're going to open up the directory. It automatically brings you to your meshes folder and your Marwin directory. So then you're going to find your unique folder, the subfolder, 
and you're going to find the NIP that you want to use. So Stormcast right there and click open. Right, that's it. Then you're going to do the same thing with the icon. Go ahead and click that box. Opens up different for some reason. Click NL mods, but oh no. Oh no, nothing's there. Um, that's okay. Um, it defaults to uh, DDS icons and you can use DDS files as an icon. I prefer Targos though. Um, so just go ahead and click Targa. This drop down here, TGA. Then go ahead and find yours. Stormkiss right there, open. Then you can see it changed right there. So you can see it right off the bat. That's exactly what it's gonna look like in game. Go ahead and click save. Um, there you go. To make everything official, I'm gonna go ahead, click file, save. That's it. Um, whenever you click save, it's going to um, pop up a dialog box where it'll sh where it'll ask you to type in a name for your mod. Type in whatever you want. You want it in game though. You know you made your weapon, and if you're not replacing a weapon, or um, it, really if you're just not replacing a weapon, your weapon is not going to automatically be in game. So you want to add it into the game. But that's really simple, actually. And there's three different ways that you can do it. You can do it through level lists, uh, manual world placement, or specific NPCs. So we'll just go down those one by one. They're all really easy. First, to add it to the level lists, we'll go to leveled item. In the filter, you're going to type weapon. And then you're going to pick one of the two. Uh, random excellent melee weapon or uh, random melee weapon basic. It depends on what kind of weapon you made. If you made like the super strong badass sword, you'll want to click the excellent melee weapon melee weapons one. Um, if you made just like a rinky dink little um, like iron dagger replacer or or like something with stats similar to that, um, you're gonna want to go to the random melee weapon basic. So let's just say we're doing an excellent one. It's the same for both. But let's just say we're doing an excellent one. Double click it, right? And then you have a whole list of uh, all the all the ones that can be uh, found through this leveled item in the game, right? So then you're gonna go navigate back to your weapon tab, and you're gonna find your weapon, Storm. Uh, oops, Storm Piss. Uh oh, Storm Piss. There it is. So this is my weapon, and all you do is drag it and drop it into here, right? All you do is drag and drop it into there. There it is, Storm Kiss. It can show up. Now it'll show up um, any NPC or chest or whatever that's using um, this specific level list now has the chance to spawn, spawn your weapon. Second uh, choice is uh, doing manual world placement. Um, that's really easy. You go down here to cell view um, and then you type in whatever cell you want. Let's just say I want to put it in Caius's house. So we're going to do um, Balmora. And then scroll down. Balmora, Caius, Caius Caseda's house. Got to scroll around. The render window is not the best. Um, to very quickly, without like having to scroll around and do all that, um, you can just go back down to the cell view over here to this list. And you can just double click on one of these guys. And I'll zoom in on it. But now this is really easy. So all you have to do. Let's go back to your back to the weapon tab. Now that we're in the cell that you want us to put it in, um, find Storm Kiss again. There it is, right there. You just drag and drop it into here, and now it's in game. Um, but you don't want it just like floating like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it, then hold down Alt, left Alt, move it around, and it's gonna snap it to a surface. So like this table, floor, the wall, the bed, this book, you can snap it. Um, makes it really easy. Uh, if you want to move it around more, you just double click on the weapon. Then it'll open up this, and then you can mess with its position and its rotation, stuff like that. Super, super easy. Now, let's say you want to put it on an NPC. Easy. So we're going to go ahead and put it on, go to our NPC tab. Let's find, uh, let's find an NPC we want to put it on. I don't know this guy. I don't know who this guy is, but he's, he's a Nord Barbarian. Maybe he'd like this weapon. So you go ahead and open it up. And he's got his own weapon right now. Um, if you want to just replace the weapon they have, all you have to do is go in here, click the weapon that he has, delete it, and then you're going to go into the weapon tab again, find your weapon, Storm Kiss is right here. And it's the same thing as the level list item, you just drag, drop it on in, and now this uh, character will spawn with this weapon. Super easy. Uh, and then you click save, and it's a done deal. Make sure that after you mess with all those things, um, you go up here, file, save. Okay, now that we've done that, go ahead, 
close the construction kit. Now you're done. That's it. So now we can go and find them in game. Um, if you go through the normal Morrowind launcher, it's just like any other um, any other mod, and make sure that it's go to the data files, and then you just make sure that it's ticked. So here's mine right here. Tick it. Let's go ahead and just spawn it in since I don't want to go find it. Open up my inventory, and there he is right there. Storm kiss. Go ahead and flip that. Oh, there we go. I forgot the button to take out my weapon. Go to this so we can see it. Um, but hey, look at it. It's it's in game now. We got our weapon. You Storm have kiss. something to say to me? You can even see it on the ground. Go ahead and throw that on the ground. You can see that the runes on it are kind of glowing. It's pretty cool. And it's it's good to go. You can package it up and send it off to Nexus. If you don't know how to package it up, I'll show you real quick. On our desktop, we're going to go ahead and create a new file. We call it... New, I'm sorry, new folder. We're going to call it... Um, my Sword. We're going to open it up. We're going to create a new folder. Meshes, textures, and icons. So you probably can guess where we're going with this. The meshes folder, you're gonna create your new folder, and uh mods, and another new folder, W, go ahead and open that up. Then same file path in the Marlin directory. Go ahead, drag that guy in there, and then we will go back to the beginning, textures, put in and all mods folder, um, and all mods textures, and all mods W. Go back here. Textures, and all mods, W. Drag these guys in. Last but not least, icons. Now, mods. Go put that. Go back to our data files. Morrowind. Uh, icons, and all mods. Just drag on in. Right. One last step. Back to the data file. Data files in Morrowind directory. Um, back to the beginning of your new folder here, my sword. Um, then you're going to go down until you can find your, um, the ESP that you made. So in my case, I was working on this one right here. And you just throw it in right there. I'm sorry. Um, you actually want to uh, name this to data files. Sorry. That's my bad. Data files. And then it has the icon sections, uh, meshes, all that. From there, go ahead, right click on it. Press zip file, zip it however you do it normally, and then you can rename the zip to whatever you want. Uh, my cool, funky, awesome sword. And then you can upload this to the Nexus. I have a lot of fun making Morrowind mods. Um, I want to do a lot more mods in the future. I think I want to start getting into armor mods, and I'm definitely going to be going to be um, making tutorials for different types of stuff that you can make. Like I made a statue recently, and I would really like to be able to show you guys uh, how to make like a statue. I definitely want to make a ton of mods or a ton of videos for Marvel and mods because I, I really really been enjoying uh, Marvel and modding. But if you're curious at all, you can go ahead and go to my Nexus. There's a link in the description and also on um, my YouTube page where you can go to my Nexus and look at all the mods that I made. Other than that, we're done for the day. This is this is your. Marwin mod. Uh, if you guys end up using this tutorial to make any mods, uh, please send me a link to them in the comments. I'd love to check them out. I, I really like it when um, people use my tutorials to actually make something. I really like looking at them. If there's any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I try to answer them as quick as I can and as thoroughly as I can. And beyond that, uh, we're, we're all done. Go ahead and get started modding. Um, like and subscribe if this helped you at all. I hope to see you guys next time.